Well, what is up there, my Fox family? To each and every one of you out there, I'm Dusty. This is Fox Holler Homestead. And as you can see, I'm back from work. Now, I've been gone for a while. I haven't been able to make a video in a, a week or two, um, but we're back to it. And uh, today we're gonna actually approach something that's pretty cool. Um, I've come up with a, a little bit of a plan uh, to get water to the RV and we're gonna use a natural creek, a beautiful mountain natural creek that is on the property. And uh, the reason why we're doing it this way is because the RV itself, there's no reason to hook up city water, not to mention we can't. Um, and while we're living in the RV, uh, until we build the house and drill our well, we don't have uh, a solid water source outside of our creek. Now, we need to get the water from the creek up to the RV to a catchment container tank that we have that's 350 gallons. And um, I've come up with a couple different ideas, but I've uh, narrowed it down to one particular. Now, uh, that's what the video is basically gonna be about today. So, um, hope you stick around. Okay, so we actually have a couple different things that we're gonna utilize. Now, I'm gonna poke you over here real fast. One thing is we're gonna use, utilize this, uh, this sump, uh, pump that we have. And um, how I'm going to do that, let's see, let's walk over real, real quick. Our water source is basically gonna come from right here. Now, this is not potable water. This is not something that we're gonna be drinking. Um, this is only gonna be utilized for showering, uh, for washing dishes, um, watering the plants uh, once we get the greenhouse up there. But uh, there's some really cool stuff as far as how we're gonna get there. there I got a pump. Now you can see these hoses that I have dragged out. The reason why I have them spread out like that is uh, in sitting in the sun is so they will soften up uh, so they won't be so curly. I'll basically attach one of the hoses to the pump uh, which will be in this five gallon bucket. The five gallon bucket will in turn sit underneath the culvert, collect the water, and from that point, pump it up the hose. And then we have a couple little, little attachments that uh, I've kind of figured out to go into the tank. And then from the tank, pump it out of the tank and into, uh, let me see, we'll go over here. So. What we're gonna do is we will pump it all the way up to the tank. Um, there is an attachment I kind of dinked around with uh, a couple different things at the uh, Ace Hardware, local Ace Hardware up in North Bend. And um, we're gonna attach this onto the tank. We'll drill a hole. This coupling will go on the inside. The washers to keep it nice and tight, come out and attach our hose onto here. And from that point, that will fill up the tank. Now, from that point, um, I'm gonna utilize a, uh, a clear rubber hose and uh, I'll come out of the hose. Now how I'm, gonna, how I'm going to pump that is found this really cool little pump that uh, is operated by a regular drill or like a cordless drill or a corded drill. Now we hook that up to right there. Um, and this is supposed to uh, be pretty proficient. So we'll see about that. From that point, have the hose come in, have the hose go out to a water filter, which is just your regular RV water filter. And uh, it's got its carbon filters, all that kind of stuff in there. And then that will come in here and then it will go out to a water regulator. And the reason why we wanna have a water regulator is especially because RV systems specifically um, you don't want to have too much water pressure pumping in there because it can potentially damage your system. So we have a water pressure regulator, which will attach the other way around, attach onto there and then attach onto the, the RV itself. So yeah, let's get to it. Huh? Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.
Now, so, now that we have this bucket set up, I'm gonna eventually find, I'll refine this process as we go, but uh, you're wondering maybe, how am I gonna get power up to this, or uh, power to the pump? Now, we do have uh, public utilities, and we're still waiting for our power to be hooked up, but in the meantime, um, I'm going to test it. I'm going to pull the generator down here and I'll plug it in. Now, as far as all of this hose and all the potential wiring uh, to be exposed, especially during the summertime, it's really not that big of a thing. But this is not a permanent solution. As in consideration to uh, um, super long-term, again, this is not a super long-term thing. This is just so that we can supply our water to our RV. Um, we have a very good flow, no shortage of water coming through. Um, but what, as far as the elements on the, the hose and the power, um, eventually I will get a piece of PVC, probably two to three inch PVC, and I will trench all the way up to the hill, or all the way up the hill to the RV, place the PVC in, uh, in the ground and run the hose along with the power line through that uh, PVC. That way it's below the ground, and again, we're not going to have to worry about freezing during the summertime, but that would uh, that will protect it from that point, that um, driving over it, any hoses, anything falling on it, etc., etc. Not to mention uh, visually pleasing. But yeah, let's keep going. All right. Now that we have the hose all the way down from the creek where the pump is, it's brought all the way up in a nice uh, nice area, so it's not out, or it's not in the way. Nobody's going to drive over it, walk over it. Um, and where the trench will eventually be. I have everything underneath the trailer, and this is our tank. It's a 350 gallon catchment tank uh, that we can use for rain as well as how we're gonna fill it up now. Now, uh, during the summer months, it gets a little dry. The creek goes down, so there's not as much water. So I, um, I also have the ability to bring in a water buffalo and fill it up that way, but because we have so much water flow right now, why not utilize that in the best way? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take that hardware that I showed you guys, we're gonna drill a hole through here. Um, I'll be able to take the top off, attach the inside to where it's a nice fit, and then I'll be able to attach this hose directly to it, and that will be our fill. Um, So I will be using two rubber grommets on the inside. The reason why is because this coupling, it doesn't, you tighten it and it doesn't screw all the way to this base. Now I don't want to force it on there because you can see it's a tapered piece and I, I don't risk cracking it, what have you. So I'm going to actually take these two that are rubber and uh, on the inside one more on the outside and uh, this should close that gap so there we go Got it mounted. So, next thing to do is actually take that clear hose, which is right here. We're gonna take this clear hose. Let me see, looked like there was a top. That's just a breather. Unscrew. I think it's just a breather. So maybe hmm, should have got another one of these, but uh, I'll do that at some other time. Um, that way. All right, so I'm back. That was pretty quick. I had to go to the hardware store again because in my mind, what was working, what I originally had planned, I changed it. And I know that a lot of us do that in the process of uh, what we're making. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same kind of fitting right here on this side so that the tube, this tube, 
that goes down in, goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank. It can actually attach to a 90 inside, come out and then 90 down to another one. And then from that point, we'll go to our drill pump. I think that's what they call that. So let's get to that. So we'll actually take a hose clamp first. Now this is gonna go on the inside. This 90 is gonna go on the inside. What I'm gonna do is I'll attach this. And that's probably a pretty good fit, but. Uh, need a flathead screwdriver. Attached to the hose. Get a guesstimate about how long is in the tank so let's say this is actually going to go on the inside but I'm hoping that this is going to relax after a while rubber washer for the inside you're going to wear and attach it the same way we did the last one make sure it actually this pump actually has directions on there on which way the flow goes so make sure that that is going the right way so the next is actually a male fitting and that male fitting is going to go in here now this will go to the pump right here this male fitting will allow to attach to the water filter and then from that we'll go into the RV and there we go so we have our pump from that will pump the water actually from here water goes in from uh, the stream down the way from here we have a Again, we have a hose that's on the inside that goes all the way down to the bottom, comes up through here. We're able to pump this with a simple drill, and then we will attach our water filter. Hey, Dusty, should I wear my, my helmet to go down? You should probably wear your helmet. Where is it? Uh, in the shed. I am a helper. There we go. Make sure that the flow is right. I mean, it's all, it can only be attached one way. There's a female side on this side, male side on the actual filter itself. So this extra piece is, uh, it actually comes with the water filter and it's just so that it can sit at an angle without kinking the hose. Well, there you go. So uh, we have our drill pump right here. I'm gonna set that right there, be able to pump that. And uh, let's get to it, let's see if it works. Here, water. That is super awesome. I mean, not that I expected it not to work. Are you kidding me? Well, let's let this fill up for a little bit and then we'll try out the uh, the drill pump and see if we can get some water in the RV. All right, well, it uh, the tank's been filling up for about an hour and 10 minutes. It took about an hour, 10 minutes to fill it up. Um, the pump did say that it would pump 
approximately 1300 gallons per hour but again we've got a huge amount of length probably a good 150 200 feet from where the pump is to the tank so i can uh, just assume that that's the reason why it's not so fast because this is only a 350 gallon tank so it's all good not worried about it not like we're in some big giant rush but the big test is we've got that but now the bigger test is to see if we can pump with the uh, drill pump into the water filter into the RV so fingers crossed go so I'm gonna continue doing this I'm gonna get some water in the tank and uh, we're gonna call that good and uh, I think the tanks about 30 gallons so I got a probably a little bit to go I'll have Regina on the inside watching the tank fill so obviously it doesn't overflow but uh, that's super awesome so I think that when it comes down to it there's a few things that I could probably improve on and with every project I think this is how it pretty much goes um, let me know what you think uh, down in the comments if you guys you know if maybe you have a different idea or something that's a little bit better I also think that you know, as far as the tank goes this was a free tank and normally they come with a cage around it and uh, that's obviously to keep it from uh, expanding which it has so I think at some point in time uh, we will invest in one of those but again this was something that was free and uh, we wanted to utilize it while we could so um yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed that if this is something new please go ahead and hit that like button hit the subscribe button join the fox family hit the like button anyway and um we sincerely appreciate every bit of support and love that uh, all of the subscribers have given us and all the viewers have given us and um until next time i'm dusty this is fox holler homestead we got nothing but blessings for each one of you and your families. And until next time, we'll see you soon.